Alexia. Foster. We have been talking about work, business English, generalist, and specialist. Our last episode, we talked about generalist, and you finished right when we turned the mics off by saying, Eu não sou boa em nada. <laughs> Ninguém no vai one me would hire me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So today, we are going to make the case for being a specialist. So this is a little bit more difficult for me because I tend to lean towards the generalist argument, but the specialists have a lot going for them. So how do you want to start this? You can tell me very good things about how a specialist is. Okay, the coolest thing about being a specialist. When I say specialist, I mean being an expert in something. That means being in the top 5% world class in something, right? Mm -hmm. You immediately can add value and solve people's problems. If you think about business, if you think about almost anything, what do you want? You want people to solve your problems in the most efficient and value, most valuable way possible. A specialist can do that for you. Out of the box. It's awesome. Your response. <laughs> I think it's awesome. I think it's amazing how... People can understand so much about one subject. Like, I don't know, coding is something that I, I have no idea. I don't understand at all, and I think it's magic. I took, like, two classes during college, but I don't understand. Okay. I know the basics, but... Yeah, perfect, perfect example. I'm glad you mentioned this, and I know I'm going to get in trouble because a lot of our listeners are coders or developers or they work in technology. But this is a great example that I think really illustrates the specialist dilemma. So right now, in 2019, you can learn how to code, just spend hours and hours every day at your computer and learn how to code in one specific language and get really, really good at it. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And if you are a really good coder, you can make money right now, almost anywhere in the world. That's Lots awesome. Lots of it. Yeah. In most cases, coding salaries are pretty good at the moment. So that's an excellent, excellent example of, hey, learn to code, make money, done. But on the other hand you see a lot of things that are kind of, I don't want to say automation, I don't want to sound too like robot, AI, artificial intelligence is going to take everything over, but things like Squarespace, WordPress, these, it's not very hard to make a website nowadays, you know? It took me like three years, but I'm an <laughs> idiot. But you can apply that to almost any expert position, and say, what about when these things start to change, you know? Think about doctors. Let's say a radiologist. Pretty soon, if this is not already happening, I think a machine will be able to do that. No, take, for example, one of the surgeries that my mom had to do it. She had to, uh, like, cut part of her intestine. intestine mm -hmm. And... It was like more or less 10 years ago, the surgery. And already 10 years ago, it was all robot. It was uh, uh, like they didn't have to cut all her belly. They could make just two small points mm -hmm. on her belly. And with a robot inside of it, they cut it and that's it. Yeah, we would say two small incisions. Incisions. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That is crazy. So one big thing. Okay, positive thing. Specialist, experts, 
in general are very highly valued in the market and just in general. Like if you are a specialist teacher on, I don't know, 17th century history in Vietnam, then when people need to know about that, they go to you and they pay you well to do that, right? On the other hand, what happens when that situation changes? So that's kind of one of the good and bad things of it. I think another really cool beneficial thing about being an expert in something is I just think it's an intrinsically good thing to go deep into a subject. Yeah, I like this. Um, I was I was thinking about my life and how much I know about a specific thing. And I got sad because I don't know. Yeah. Again, this is not a therapy session for us. This is <laughs> this is English no crew work. Yeah, work but you make me think about it. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is um, a gap in my life that I need to fulfill. Yeah. So I'm just thinking about this right now. But I am listening to this online course called Music in the Brain which Alexia is already laughing because I talk about it like every 30 seconds. <laughs> But it is just how our brain reacts to music, and it's fascinating. Everyone should take it. But I think that most experts, that expertise just magically moves into other parts of your life. Like they were doing all of these studies with children that had to learn instruments when they were young, like the children whose parents forced them to play violin for like eight hours a day, you know? Mm -hmm. And those children were automatically way better in the future at a lot of other things, including language, but just a lot of like general skill. <laughs> <laughs> leave it in, leave it in. Just like a lot of general cognition skills. So when you think you're just playing piano all day, you are actually training all of these different parts of your brain, and there is something positive about that. Yeah, with dance as well. Exactly. Yeah. So if all you do all day is dance ballet, you have all of these ancillary benefits, you know? Yeah, that's very true. Well, but... Yeah, I don't know. I wish that... I know that it's not like... 880, that you had to be a specialist or you had to be a generalist. I think that you can find the, the middle situation. We, uh -huh. We would say the middle ground. And also because you always say... 8, como que é? 8 ou 80. 8 ou 80. Um, we would say all or nothing, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I think that you have to... You must have a middle ground. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah, so Alexia, can I tell you my vision for the future? Yeah. Okay, so in the future, this is what I believe, that everyone will have to be experts in certain things, not necessarily like world-class specialists, but you will have to be particularly good at certain things, like let's say in your case, in production or in customer service. You need to have experience and a lot of value in those areas, but you also have to be just the general jack of all trades who can make things happen because the world is becoming more and more uncertain more unstable, especially in terms of the economy and the financial sector. That's very true. That's what I think, and I'm sure in like one year we will listen to this and say, what was Foster talking about? <laughs> Or, Foster is right. That is all English no Kluhaju is, is just a big chance on me sounding like a genius Or an idiot, and you always <laughs> just sounding like a cute, lovely, 
Brazilian girlfriend. Oh, amor, you're not an idiot. I think that's a great place to end. Okay, so I'll see you in the next episode. Okay.